Good morning everybody, or afternoon, or evening, or middle of the night, wherever it is in your part of the world. Um, three games to share with you today, and I'm going to start with, I've had a couple of the that have been submitted that are apparently stonkers, and I haven't even looked at them, so we're going to get onto those next. But first I want to take you through my game of the day. Um, so I'm doing this no blitz ember idea. Yes, I've cheated. And I've played a bunch of Blitz, um, sometimes sober, sometimes not. And, um, of course, it doesn't help you chess, really. But, uh, so today I thought, oh, well, I'll take on a normal 15 plus 10 rapid game. I'm going to give it my full focus. And I'm going to be ready for my opponent to be a Jellyhead. Because here's the thing. We can all be a dumbass. You know that when you play chess... You can be a dumbass. So somebody who's 50 points higher rated than you can certainly be a dumbass, right? The, the, our performance will fall into a bell curve, yeah? And most of the time we'll play kind of around our ability. Sometimes we'll play right up to the limits of our ability. And sometimes we'll play, you know, well, maybe in the middle we're playing to our ability and, and a bit lower, which is kind of typical because we rush and we're not disciplined. And then sometimes we'll completely suck. And um, so that's the mentality I took into this game. I've got the black pieces. I'm rated 14.95. My opponent's rated 15.20. So, you know, they're a bit higher, but yeah, I've been that level. And we have, so I'm black. <coughs> we start with D4. Now, this is what I'm playing at the moment. I'm inviting c4, which very often comes now. Okay, and it's calling this the Indian game. But now I go into the Budapest. Okay, so um, the idea is that you are saying to white, oh, look, here's a free pawn. Okay, and there's actually two, two well, it's, I mean, this is the gambit, right? And there's two approaches. If, if you take c, you can go that way, which is the Budapest gambit. Or you can go here, which is the Fyarovich Gambit. And that's the one that I was kind of ready for. And that's the one that I'm kind of studying. Because it's, you know, that's this is me at the moment, right? I'm an intermediate player. I don't need to play the, the most accurate lines. And these Gambits certainly are not um, solid. However, at this level, it could lead to fun and games. So, my opponent declines. Okay, now he's from Canada. Right, and we've just I've just played this game. It's like 8 a.m. here. So it could be anything from um, Pacific time midnight to 3 a.m. in the morning if he's on Eastern time. So I think he may be a bit tired, but that's not my problem. Okay, so <clears throat> remember, we are always ready. So this should be in your checklist, really. Did my opponent just screw up? Okay, now... Here, no, he hasn't screwed up. He's got he's got quite a solid pawn structure. Um, I decide to capture, All right? Because if if he retakes with the e pawn, then he's got a completely new kind of structure that he's not going to be familiar with. Yeah, he's going to have his c and his d pawns out there, but there's going to be no e pawns on the board. There's going to be opportunities for checks and stuff like that. If he takes with a queen, I've got knight c six. Hit the queen with tempo. And I've got two minor pieces out in the board, and he's stuck with Queenie out in the board, which wouldn't be good. So he recaptures with the pawn, correct move, I'm sure. And now d5. I'm just thinking, screw it, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess with his opening. If he takes here, if I can recapture with the queen, then I've got two pieces out in the board. He's got nothing. He's got nothing blood. Yeah? He doesn't do that, of course. He develops his knight, knight to f3, perfectly good move. Getting ready to castle kingside, all that kind of stuff. And I decide to develop and pin the knight. And I'm in here. I'm, I'm calculating, right? <clears throat> I I would say. See, a lot of chess teachers say when you are a beginner, don't worry too much about openings and so learning openings. So, and I think that's right. But that doesn't mean that the first moves of the game aren't critically important. Okay. It's much more important to start, instead of trying to memorize theory, which will help you as you progress, okay, 
focus on giving every move equal level of attention. And that means calculating. So at this point already in the game, this is move, we've played five moves, okay? Um, <clears throat> five turns. And I'm starting to think, okay, so if he blocks with the bishop, can I pin the bishop? But then he can castle the next move and the bishop's defended, yeah? So already starting to calculate, if this, then that, okay? Now here, he doesn't block. I was expecting him to play bishop e2, he's played bishop d3, right? Now, what that says to me is, there's the potential for, for example, a check by the queen, but then he just develops a bishop for free and blocks, yeah? Um, but I was expecting him to come here to defend the knight. The knight is still pinned. Okay, anyway, we'll see what happens. So now, <clears throat> telling the story of the board, right? Bishop d3, something important has changed. What has changed? What's changed on the board? Right? And it involves the knight, and it involves the queen, and it involves Dave, right? Dave, the deep pawn, here, is technically defended twice. Although the knight is iced. Iced, baby. So the knight can't really move, right? But if the queen captures there, the knight is no longer pinned. Now with bishop d3, <coughs> this is what you've got to be awake to, yeah? Bishop d3, uh-oh, Dave has just lost a defender. The queen is no longer defending, the bishop's in the way, right? And the bishop isn't defending, so the only defender is this, and what do we know about that? Iced, right? So, knight c6, yeah? You can beat 1,500 players, because they, they do screw up. Super Grandmasters screw up from time to time. By the way, great feedback from a Fight Club video yesterday. People saying, do you know what, this is great fun. This is great fun. Watching a game between two beginner level players, like two sub 1000s, and having it commentated is way more fun than watching Grandmasters play and having it commentated. And I agree. It was brilliant fun, that game. Um, and this is like a 500 and a 750. Um, I, I sat through hours and hours and hours of the World Championship that's just been, and the best bit of it, the, watching the play is dull as dishwater, it's like watching fucking paint dry, you know? It was terrible. Nothing happens for hours on end. The, the commentary was a lot more interesting, but then again, they're having to fill 20 minutes, 40 minutes or whatever at a time with what's going to happen, what's going on, right? So the commentary's great, you know? Anyway, back to the game. So my opponent, I think, misses the threat. My opponent goes ahead and castles. And now, but now it gets worse because he ha he's missed what's going on on the board. Remember, this is a 15 plus 10. He's, he's on 15 minutes, one second, okay? So he's not even using his 10 seconds increment properly. Never mind the 15 minutes that he's got in the bank. Because now, just look. Knight takes d4. Got two attackers on this knight. And it's still pinned on the queen. Terrible. Okay. So what's going to happen? He's going to have to save the knight. So he's going to have to, for example, play the bishop back and block. Or bring this knight out and defend. Okay. Probably knight out might be the better move, although it makes life difficult for this bishop. Okay, <clears throat> but he comes up with an alternative. He actually plays rookie one check, which is an idea because you know this is danger levels. Yeah, as Uko talks about, is it Levy talks about danger levels? Um, so yeah, there's this attack on the knight, but check is more forcing than the opportunity of capturing a knight. So I have to block bishop e seven. Quite happy with that. It's defended by the queen. It's defending the queen. I get to castle at some point soon. Also thinking about the possibility of castling long, maybe at some point. Okay, and now my opponent plays h3. And that's a poor move. Why? Mm. 
You can see what it's thinking. It's thinking, Oi, Bishop, out of it. Get out of it. Yeah? But he hasn't thought it through. This is not 1500 play. Right? He's playing, he, this guy is playing in the lower part <coughs> of his bell curve of performance. Because knight takes knight. Now, queen takes isn't possible. Right? So the only other option, because bishop takes queen and that's losing. The only other option is pawn takes. And now look, right? This is not, you know, you don't have to be Hikaru Nakamura to see this. Bishop takes and suddenly, look at this king. He's in a horrible, horrible position. Okay, now. And he's got a bishop in his face. So the king can't access either of these two squares. The only way this king could move, if it has to move, is on to the edge of the board. Now, knight c3, developing move. It's important to get your pieces in the game. But still, look, we're on move 11, yeah? I'm two moves, <coughs> excuse me, away from completing development. My opponent is now also two moves away, but he's white as well. And he's found himself in a horrible position. Now, there is tension between these pawns. We have to be aware of that. Okay. So, I capture on c4 now. Because I figure... If bishop takes, yeah, hey, happy days. I'll trade queens all day long, right? I'm up right now three pawns. We've both lost a knight. He's lost four pawns. He's down to one, two, three, four, and I've got six, yeah? And they're all at home, and they're not doubled and isolated like these guys are, right? So happy if he wants to do that. Now, he does not recapture with the bishop. He finds a reasonable move, okay? Queen a4 check. So he likes his checks. And now he's threatening maybe to take with the queen, take with the bishop, but he's presented me with a problem. Okay, now, um, I can't cancel out of check, which is what I would like to do. If c6, queen might just take that, right? I thought about b5. Is there anything in this? Queen takes check. Take that? No. Nothing in it. All right? So, I came up with an alternative. Oh, oh, yeah. The other thing I thought about was retreat the bishop back to here. All right? Hitting the queen. But then what's going to happen? Queen's going to take the pawn. So I play queen d7 instead. I'm thinking, look, this bishop isn't about to get trapped. Not by doubled isolated pawns. Right? Um... I'm going to force the issue just a little bit. Propose a trade of queens. Probably force the queen to capture here. Yeah. And leave this bishop there because you never know. I might find, my queen might find a way, you know, to here with a checkmate threat, for example. You never know. That, that bishop is handy. There's no point retreating at this point. Now my opponent doesn't capture the pawn and doesn't trade queens. My opponent comes up with an alternative move. Knight to b5. And again, and he thought for 2 minutes 27 seconds on this, right? Again, you can see his thinking. And it's decent thinking, right? But it's it stops too short. His thought is, knight takes c7, check, fork the rook. Queen can't take the knight because the queen would be pinned at that point. The queen can't, can't take the queen because the king's in check from the knight. So it's a nice move. But what he failed to do was think, if I play that move, this guy's got 11 minutes on the clock. If I play that move, what's my opponent's best response? Didn't think it through. C6. Simples, right? Now, uh-oh. He's got a bishop under attack and a knight under attack. You've got to be very, very careful. If you counter-attack with a piece, you've got to be careful that that piece itself can't be counter-attacked if you've already got a piece under attack. Yeah. Now he's got two pieces under attack. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> now my opponent thinks he's got out of trouble as well. Now, I confess, I hadn't thought that far ahead either, right? Um, but my opponent now thinks, aha, 
So he thinks again for nearly a minute, right? Bishop takes c4, and now pawn takes knight. Uh-oh. Bishop takes. And look, got queen and king in line, and nothing, nothing that can block on this square, right? So I can't take the knight. But it's okay, because I have a counter response. Again, can you see my counter response? Feel free to pause. Quite pleased with this one. Black to play and win material. It's a nice little puzzle. Okay, the move I played is a6. Now, the knight is under attack by two pawns, right? Now the knight might decide to piss off somewhere else. Not there. But, you know, and if the knight goes, b5. And it's because of this pattern. These pieces are two squares apart, and there's a pawn that can jump into the triangle square. So my opponent now counterattacks my queen. This is great, this is great fun, this is great chess. Right, I retreat to c8, um, and he's still got his problem, right? And knight can't come in here with the forcing check, because queen takes. So, knight comes in here, <coughs> forcing an exchange. Now, I'd calculated this. Bishop takes, rook takes, b5 anyway. And look, my queen is defending both of these pawns from that square. And he's got two pieces under attack. And he's not in a happy place. So he, desperado capture, bishop takes f7 check, king takes f7, and I'm now in finding myself plus four. I have an extra knight and an extra pawn. What's more, the white king is very exposed, and the rook's off the back rank. Okay. Now, my king has been forced to move as well. So we have queen b3 check. What move do I play? What move would you play? Now I decide it's time to retreat. Now I decide it's time to consolidate. I'm plus four. I've got an extra knight and an extra pawn. Bishop back to e6 is defended twice. Queen and then king. So he can't take. He'll, he'll lose the exchange. All right, so... He plays queen out to here. Again, attacking this twice. <coughs> I'm not entirely convinced with that move. I'm, I think he could have done better. I play rook e8. So I'm thinking a couple of things. One is possibility of discovered attack. The other is get the, queen, uh, the, the king to some safety in the corner. Queens are still on the board. Get the king out of trouble. Let's think about an attack, yeah? He's only got a dark squared bishop, so I want to keep my king on a light square, probably g8. Okay, now he brings his queen in here. So now he has two attackers on this guy. One, two. Okay, so what would you play here? I play bishop d5. And I'm also thinking about attacks as well now. I, what I want to take the heat off my king... Because, you know, this guy is keen. He's in an attacking frame of mind. He wants to attack. He's prepared to attack, right? And that can work, right? Like in the, um, the Fight Club game yesterday, White went down a queen, got his queen trapped, and still checkmated black, okay? It can happen. So never take your eye off the ball. Never underestimate your opponent. <coughs> um... <clears throat> Excuse me. So, here, the bishop is now defending this pawn a second time. The bishop is also attacking the pawn on f3, from where it would still be defending c6. So now I'm threatening queen in here, right? So this is my threat. Bishop takes there, queen to here, checkmate. Right? Or queen to here, check, then to there, checkmate. Probably even more forcing if that pawn's off the board. Okay, so he has a think. Bishop in here, and now I come in with my queen. Right? I figure that I'm safe, and the threat is obvious. Mate in two. And there's not an awful lot he can do about it. So, 
He thinks for nearly two minutes and sacks the exchange. Now I have an option. I've got two options, right? Pawn takes rook, knight takes rook, plus any other good candidate moves that are even better. I couldn't find one, so I want to take the rook. And I decided to take the rook with the knight. <coughs> now, I knew that that leaves the pawn hanging. However, so is the bishop. Okay? And the knight's defended. The knight's in the middle of the board. It's not a bad space for a knight. Uh, queen's still attacking this. Happy days. So his bishop's going to have to move or get defended. Bishop moves to there. Now, um, I simply now retreat my queen. It's time to come back and say to white what you got. you got nothing, yeah? you got nothing. You're way down. You're down a whole rook now, right? Your king's out in the open, naked and afraid. My king's going to go there and get safe. He can't even play his rook onto the open file now because queen just takes it off. Okay? And I think that was the best move, but... No. I'll, ch I'll check the analysis later. Queen now to here. Kind of desperate times now. He's looking at my pawn. Right? What, what's the best move for white, for black now? I play queen g6. Right? I've solved that problem. And I'm giving him another one. He really does not want to trade queens when he's a rook behind. Right? And I'm pinning the bishop. Right? Three for the price of one. Lovely. So he grabs now a pawn, blundering his queen. I take his queen, he resigns. Okay? That's it. Uh, you know, 1,500 players screw up. I know from bitter experience. Particularly when it's the middle of the night and they're tired. All right. So that was the first game I wanted to share with you. I've got two more, and I haven't looked at these. This one's from The Monty 90, rated 617, and it's a five-minute blitz game. Okay, and then middle of BMX, 583. This should be fun. Expect fireworks. Hold on to your wobbly bits. Let's go. E4. E5. Bishop's opening. This is actually aggressive and trappy. Knight c6. Knight c3. Huh. This is now transposed into the Vienna. If I flip the board, Max Lang defense. So for white here, I play this. Queen g4. Okay, what does white play? Queen h5. Not as good blood. Not as good. Why? Because from here, the queen's attacking g6. Yeah? Anyway, so. What? Okay, all right. Okay, so the knight's defending f7. Now I get it. Preventing mate. Okay, that's one way of doing it. We have knight f3. And g6 drops the knight, right? This pawn, or before you push a pawn, what is that pawn defending? Oh, it's defending my knight. Now we've lost a knight. Now d6. It's not looking terribly fun. Um, we've got two knights that can kind of jump into here as well at some point. Queen g7, so we have to do something with our rook. Rook there abandons the defense of h7. Queen grabs h7. Okay. Queen f6. And g4. Oof. Why? What? Why? Do you think of pushing a pawn and then bishop out here? That, that might be quite good. Uh, Hasn't he just blundered his knight as well? <clears throat> He's just blundered his knight. Okay. What's undefended? You've got four, four minutes, 14 seconds on the board. It doesn't take long to say what changed on the board. Always say what changed on the board. He's blundered a knight in the same way that you did and leaving a rook hanging. Okay. Wake up. So let's offer a trade of knights instead. Okay. This is also offering that. Oh, threatening that, so I would imagine we're going to have knight takes. We do not have knight takes. And now, black actually has two checks. You can take there or take there with check. Takes there with check. Okay, queen's still under attack, but the king's going to have to move. King moves. Now the queen must move. Queen moves. Good. So, uh, we're now just down a pawn. 
but white has this from that square. Does white notice? Yes! Take c7 with a fork. Oh no! Okay, and instead of take... Instead of taking the rook, he takes a pawn. And king takes knight. Fair enough. And now, he's got bishop d7 connecting the rooks and shielding the, the king. There with check, but exactly, bishop d7. Right? Pushes a pawn. This is a discovered attack on the queen. I hope we notice this. Discovered attack on the queen. Yes, queen takes g4. Oh, I like that move. That's nice. That stupid pawn that he pushed out there for no reason at all, right, has now just been snapped off. And now this knight gets to move here and win the queen, right? Always lining up discovered checks. Discovered checks are so, so powerful, right? Even if you don't get to do it, it's a huge threat. And whenever you, you have the possibility, see where can that piece move with the greatest amount of danger? And boom, bada boom, could win the queen. No, yes! No, yes, I won your queen. I won your queen, ha 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 ha. Okay, and now, ooh, we've got two pieces already looking at it. Surely rook takes f2 check. Yes, or even, but yeah, bishop takes f2 is also very, very, very dangerous. Because then again, you threaten to move the bishop with discovered checks. It's a free move. But we have rook takes. Okay, there's only one legal move now. King has to go there. Okay, surely queen e2 would have been checkmate. But instead, black decides to grab a pawn. Okay, always look for checkmates though. And now checkmate. Nice. Nice game, lots of fun. Okay, ready for one more? Now this one's a 1451 against the 1340. This is my friend Zeinster 50, or Zeinster 54, rated 1451 at Rapid. Opponent is Megash Matt from the Ukraine, rated 1340. And it's a quick one. E4. B6, the Owen defense. All right, D4. Okay, the Guatemala defense. That's a new one. Okay, so, I mean, here, even C4 is possible. Okay, but we don't have that. We have a trade of bishops. Okay, nothing that has really been much been gained. Apart from black now has a, a knight on the side of the board, and A3 here would really make life tr tricky for that knight. And we have knight F3, and we have C5. This is a very wonky opening from black. D5, decline the trade, yep. E6. Queen here is attacking the undefended knight. But the knight does have this move, attacking, counter attacking the queen. Yep, it does that. And now queen here, getting out of the way. Trade, trade. Queen there, check. Bishop there, Blocking. Knight f6 developing. <coughs> now I have two attackers on this pawn. So what we're going to do? We're going to push the pawn. No, we're going to castle. Knight takes pawn. White's not bothered. I'm thinking maybe rook e1. Rook e1. It's defended by the knight. Yeah, rook e1. And now. We have the threat of a discovery against queen and king in line. Always watch out. Okay, king moves out of trouble, but goes on to the stupid end of the board. All right, that's one move. Oh yeah, it attacks the queen. I think maybe this first and then that? I don't know, not sure. But anyway, attack the queen, discovered attack on the queen. Um, <coughs> Counterattacks the queen. Okay, now queen can't take here because queen takes. So what's going to happen? Apart from surely this pawn's just hung. Queen takes b5, yeah, absolutely. And we're threatening mate in one now. Boom! Knight e4, mate. 
Good night, thank you. 14 moves, that will do. I'll collect my points and go home. Good stuff, but what a... Ugh. Guatemala defence, guys. That sounds like a dumb ass opening to me. I don't like that at all, Precious. Um, don't play that, kids. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Three great games. Hope it's been educational. Hope it's been um, entertaining. I've enjoyed myself. Thanks for watching. See you later.